Hello and welcome to video number seven of our tour through the evolutionary milestones in the first 3000 million years of life. This is in fact our last video. Very well done for making it this far. I hope you found it interesting and obviously you will have the opportunity to ask questions in a Zoom session associated with this series of videos. I want to finish by highlighting an event called the Cambrian Explosion that happened just over 540 million years ago, or at least started just over 540 million years ago. Since periods of time in the geological uh, column tend to be named after the fossils that appear in the rocks, and this marks a distinct change in those fossils, this event also marks the end of the Proterozoic Eon and the start of the Phanerozoic. It's an event in which a group of organisms, that is the animals, uh, appears. Animals are creatures that generally respire oxygen. They get their energy by consuming organic material and they can move. Furthermore, they have a number of interesting features in their embryo embryonic development that they hold in common. So all animals grow from a hollow sphere of cells called the blastula during the development of their embryos. A large subset of animals are also bilaterally symmetrical. So animals as a whole are called the metazoa, that group of bilaterian animals, those that have this line of symmetry down the middle, including us, are called the bilateria. So between 541 and 515 million years ago, there was this unique period. Uh, it's marked first by the appearance of hard parts in the fossil record, and then over a relatively short period of time, the vast majority of major groups of animals, that is animals that are members of monophyla, um, which are still around today, appear in the fossil record. This is alongside a number of relatively unusual, seemingly unique body plans for creatures that were around at this time. And this is what we call the Cambrian Explosion. Examples of fossils are shown on this slide. Uh, these are all creepy crawlies, so arthropods, creatures with segmented legs, um, but a wide range of other uh, creatures of phyla appear during this time period. And we know about this event from deposits like the Burgess Shale, a very, very famous site of exceptional fossil preservation in Canada. Uh, this and other sites from around this time have an unusual preservational mechanism where they represent a deep seabed that's been rap rapidly buried by fine sediment. This is so common in fact that it's called Burgess Shale type preservation and is fairly widespread during the uh, time period when this event was happening. When these sediments were starved of oxygen, oxygen preservation of carbon films, uh, including the soft parts of all of the animals that were around during this period, uh, occurred, providing unique insights into the an early animals. I don't have a great deal of time to provide uh, details of the ins and the outs of what we do and we don't know about the Cambrian explosion, but I wanted to highlight that debate has raged for a long time about the very nature of this event. Was this a genuine event in which evolution did something a bit different and it was faster and these animals actually appear? Or is it a change in, say, seawater chemistry or preservational uh, style, which means that organisms that had been around for a lot longer were actually just being preserved in the fossil record for the first time? Or could it represent the evolution of, say, hard parts and thus an increased preservation potential for creatures that had previously just been squishy and thus not likely to survive in the fossil record? Well, we don't know for sure, but use, in modern studies, we can use DNA uh, as a source of data that's independent of the fossil record largely. We can get into that if you're interested in asking questions about it in our Zoom chat. And Rob will cover, cover some of the topics um, that are required for understanding these analyses called molecular clocks in his lectures for this course. But suffice it to say that DNA can be used to analyze evolutionary rates deep into the history of life. And I've included an example of a a tree from a paper by Lee et al that was published in 2013, which uses modern uh, animals' DNA uh, to, to analyze evolutionary rates and suggests that evolution was genuinely uh, occurring at a faster rate 
during this Cambrian explosion than it was on the time periods either side of it. So much discussion is ongoing um, about the exact details of how that may have happened and in fact the, the rate at which this occurred, but some things are fairly generally agreed. We can all agree that the Cambrian represents the main diversification within the animals, a substantial increase in the morphological disparity, so that's the range of different body forms that, were, that are found in the organisms that were alive compared to what had come before this time period, and it represents the first emergence of really complex food webs which occurred in the early Cambrian. So that's what we do know and some elements of where debate remains regarding the Cambrian explosion. There are a multitude of suggested cause, possible causes and this diagram which I've borrowed from Smith and Harper, a paper in 2013, provide just a few of these. There are too many to discuss in detail here but I recommend you check out Smith and Harper if you want some more details. Recent hypotheses generally fall into three categories. One, that this could have been a developmental or genetic um, event where the evolvability of bilaterian animals and their tendency to induce escalatory arm races led to rapid evolution. It could have been, number two, an ecological event. Uh, there was a long period of erosion in the end of the Proterozoic Eon. Uh, this led to low relief continental interiors Major sea level rises at the start of the Cambrian then led to the flooding of these, and then that in turn led to an increase in the habitable area that could have driven this event. Uh, camp number three of possible causes are those which are abiotic, environmental or geochemical hypotheses, such as continental flooding, which led to increases in calcium and phosphate, facilitating the origins of biomineralization. And it could, of course, be uh, that a combination of these different types of potential causes led to the events that we do see in the Cambrian Explosion. If you're interested in the Cambrian Explosion, please do uh, check out the reading that I provided on this topic for the course. Now, if it feels like I have skipped over a lot of details while looking at these evolutionary milestones, that's because I have. I could have written an entire lecture course on the contents of the videos that you've just watched. So in order to support your learning, I provided some reading online. I would also strongly encourage you to come to the Zoom sessions where we can discuss some of the topics that we have have um, identified in these videos, I can answer any questions you have and where I'll be able to uh, give out the coursework assignment for this unit and answer any questions that you have about that. In the meantime though, thank you very much for making it this far to the end of video number seven. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to talking about these topics with you sometime in the near future. Thank you very much.